Hey everyone, today we'll be looking at the shiny Pokemon of the Alola region to add to our collection of shiny Pokemon videos. I thought it'd be pretty enjoyable, and it's a spoiler free topic about Sun and Moon since we'll only be talking about the design without mentioning the story. It also lets us keep true to our insistence on discussing design. Yay! But before we do that, we have a very fitting sponsor for today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Pokemon Sun and Moon Amino, a fun community based app centered around Pokemon Sun and Moon. Here you can join a passionate community of Pokemon Sun and Moon fans, join discussions, share your experiences with the games, vote on polls, and more. There's something for everyone. I personally like to look at what other adventures community members have been on. Try talking about your catch of the day, or making a guide and interacting with the friendly Pokemon Sun and Moon Amino community today. You can follow me or many other Poketubers on here as well. Try downloading this free app for Android or iOS in the description below, and join in the fun of Pokemon Sun and Moon Amino. Hope you enjoy, and on with the video! We've talked about a lot of different things concerning shiny Pokemon, and with Sun and Moon having just been released, that means there's plenty more wonderful shinies out there to talk about. I also thought it'd be a good middle ground, as we could talk about Sun and Moon without revealing any spoilers since we'll just be discussing the designs and how these colors affect our perception of these Pokemon. Don't worry though, next week we'll be having a fun, trolly, non-Sun and Moon topic to discuss, so stay tuned and subscribe for that. Thanks for being here, and I welcome you all to my Top 10 Shiny Pokemon in Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. I hope you enjoy. Number 10, Oranguru. Now, I wanted to start off with this one because I got a lot of comments on previous Shiny videos talking about how I dislike every Shiny Pink Pokemon. And that's not entirely true. I dislike it when it's sort of thrown on and looks like Game Freak accidentally messed up their laundry making it not the most enjoyable to look at. However, Oranguru takes the color and really blends it into its existence. It makes it look like a sophisticated wise monk key, with its subtle pink robes that highlight its psychic capabilities. I think this color scheme of light pink and light blue really go well together, especially with this Pokemon's already purple cloak. It just accentuates this Pokemon's persona. So see, I don't hate all shiny pink Pokemon, just most. Number 9, Toucanon. Toucanon has a sort of festive shiny version. Its color scheme fits the tropical feel of Alola without changing too much of its look. It honestly just feels like another shiny version, sort of like Vavillion's billion versions, instead of just overdoing the color. And I really like seeing that approach with shiny Pokemon. Toucanon's shiny version just pulls that idea off really well and makes it worth catching. Although every single shiny Pokemon is worth catching, because they're rare. Rare enough for me to never encounter one. Seriously, what's going on? Number eight. Ooh, that's not a number. Number eight, Oricorio's Ghost Form. This is another Pokemon that inverts its colors, but my goodness does it work so well. Personally, I haven't really liked many Pokemon that just simply invert their original form and make it their shiny form, but Oricorio pulls it off very well. It makes it look even more majestic and spiritual, maybe. I really like this shiny form because while there haven't been too many great inverted Pokemon, this is one of the few that looks really good. And for once, I'm actually glad that they chose to do it. Number 7, Komala. I just think that this one is funny. Imagine looking at this guy thinking, wow, another Komala, and running away, only to not realize that the only thing changed about this Pokemon is its log. That, oh no, that's gonna happen to me. I definitely think it was a nice idea. It's a bit hard to see, but not too hard since the log is colored completely differently and it's bright and apparent. I just like seeing unique shinies, and Komala definitely takes the cake in this generation for being a unique shiny. Number 6, Palosand. I mean, although it does look like a funny burnt castle, it has this really rugged, mysterious look. And with it being a living sand castle, that just fits for me. It also makes it devious looking, like Howl's Moving Castle or the Castle of Dark Illusions. Better not break its flotation device, or we'll have some plot holes to panic about. Number five, Cosmoem. I feel like this might be another Pokemon that I praise heavily, but others might not like as much. Cosmoem Shiny, or however the heck you say that, is a very unique one, turning a very lovely red, or burgundy looking color. It really looks like it's gripping onto its heart in this shiny. And if you know what this Pokemon does, then you might see why I think this shiny version fits the Pokemon so darn well. 
It really is just a simple change from one color to another, but it just feels so fitting for this Pokemon. And that's what I think a shiny Pokemon should be. Number 4. Decidueye. This shiny makes Decidueye look even more like a lost traveler trying to find its way. And I love when a shiny version does that. It's kind of dramatic looking and makes it feel like Decidueye, the grass ghost, has an even darker backstory. And that's something I love about shiny versions. Just by changing their color scheme, you might have more questions about them. If it implies anything, or maybe just lets your mind run wild with different stories from how it looks. And I think that's awesome. Number 3. Vikavolt. This color scheme fits the Pokemon so amazingly. It looks like an international space station, zooming around looking for Minior's, trying to destroy my team. The colors just complement each other so nicely. It has this chrome finish with a lime green touch, and it's just used so nicely compared to, well, Ursaring. Everything just blends together so well and works wonders for this metallic looking bug Pokemon. And if I hadn't have had that incredibly obnoxious battle against one in our playthrough, it might have been a spot or two higher. But not really. Number 2. Tapu Fini. All of the Guardian Pokemon have a very similar shiny color scheme. So I decided to pick the one that looked the best instead of putting multiples on this list. And Tapu Fini just took the cake. It looks so elegant yet mysterious in this form. The dark shiny look gives it an even more ghostly presence, which really fits its guardian deity spirit persona. This Pokemon sort of has the same feeling as I described for Decidueye's shiny, while being this unique water fairy type that summons its own terrain. It just looks so cool and well done, and to me, it might be one of the best shiny Pokemon for this color. Number 1. Golisopod. I'm just a huge fan of very subtle shiny changes, and Golisopod takes that idea and expands on it so well. The slight color changes, combined with its already unique design, just makes it look even more fearsome. Its original form is this powerful, robotic looking beast, while its shiny form is that, plus it looks like it was given a fresh coat of paint and some added attachments. I wanted to avoid saying shinier. Golisopod's shiny is one of the best shinies in Pokemon Sun and Moon, and possibly one of the best shinies ever, thus giving it the spot of number one. Thanks everyone for watching, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more. We'll be having a bunch of new topics that don't relate to Sun and Moon, and a few standard Sun and Moon topics as well for the fun of it. Hope you enjoyed, and until next time, keep on catching! Specifically shiny Pokemon, because I still haven't caught one.